Hare Krishna. My name is Anuta Madasa and I serve as the communications director for ISKCON on the global level and I'm also a member of the Governing Body Commission. I live in Washington, D.C., where I've been serving for approximately 20 years. I joined the Hare Krishna movement or ISKCON in 1975. Previous to that, I was a student at the university and I was focused primarily on studying the social sciences and political science or political theory. There was a lot of concern at that time among young people in America where I was about uh, issues with the Vietnam War, a lot of problems with civil rights, problems between different races, struggles with the cities and economic divide between different classes of people. So there's a lot of concern among young people. How do we make the world a better place? So I was particularly interested in social science and political science about how to create systems that can be more fair for people and help resolve the economic divide between people. But what I found out through my studies was that, uh, long story short, the real problem was not so much this system or that system. We studied capitalism and communism and different types of political philosophies going back to the Greek philosophers, Aristotle, Plato, etc., Socrates, to try to understand what really is the best system by which human society can be organized. But what I came to understand is that the real problem is whoever is running society or leading society or making up the society, even the citizens, if they are filled with selfish desires, if they don't have an understanding of a shared purpose among humanity, then by nature they're going to come in conflict with one another. And that's been happening throughout history. So my social interest and my political interest led to a spiritual interest because I came to realize that truly the greatest philosophers in the world were not Hobbes and Descartes and Locke and Rousseau and all those people, but it really was uh, Jesus Christ and Lord Krishna and Lord Buddha. Those people and their teachings really grapple with the core issues. Why are people suffering in this world? Where have we come from? Where are we going? So one thing after another for me as a student uh, led to a more serious uh, exploration of spiritual organizations, spiritual philosophies, spiritual and religious communities. I went to Buddhist retreats. I started attending Christian churches. I started going to the Hare Krishna temple. I was reading the Bible. I was reading the teachings of the Lord Buddha and uh, associated with different spiritually minded people. I quit my university studies to become a little more serious about it and eventually left where I was, which was at that time Ann Arbor, Michigan, the University of Michigan, and traveled around the western part of the United States to spend some time with nature, again more study. And eventually uh, my, my, my pursuit, my, my quest to find some type of spiritual direction, a spiritual community, ended up with the Hare Krishna movement. I came to Boulder, Colorado, which was kind of a spiritual center in, in that area. It still is a little bit today. And again, experimented with some different ashrams and different yoga practices and things and decided to really give a serious try of applying the process of bhakti yoga, Krishna consciousness. So I moved into the Hare Krishna temple. That was in 1975. And I promised myself at that time, I made a promise. I said, um, I don't want to go back to the things I was doing before because they didn't satisfy me. I really felt that all of these different social ideas and arguments and political systems is basically focused on there's the material world that's like a big pie. Everybody's fighting to see how bigger piece they can get. But we needed a deeper solution. How can we learn to utilize the Earth's resources and the human resources in such a way that benefit everybody? And that needs a spiritual solution. And I found that in the Hare Krishna movement. As Prabhupada teaches us that if we throw stones in a lake Every place where the stone has the center, so many ripples go out from that one location. And they come in conflict with one another. Nations are in conflict and races of people are in conflict and classes of people are in conflict and different ideologies are in conflict. But if we all have the same center of Krishna or God or divinity, spiritual nature is in the center, then all of those ripples there are in harmony. 
So this has been my practical experience as a Hare Krishna devotee. I spend most of my time now in communications work, trying to build relationships within our society and with other communities of people. I do a lot of work on religious freedom issues. I'm very active in trying to promote religious freedom, not just for the Hare Krishna movement, but for people, religious traditions all over the world, particularly minorities in different parts of the world. I do a lot of work with interfaith dialogue with the Christian communities, some with Hindu communities, uh, a lot with Muslim communities, to try to help us go deeper and understand who we are, what are our shared interests, and also with government agencies, academics of different varieties, neighbors, the media, uh, different organizations like that, to try to help promote our common values of humanity and spirituality, who we are, how we can be happy on the inside. And I genuinely believe that when we understand how we can be happy on the inside through a spiritual awakening, automatically the external problems, the problems of the environment, the political problems, all these things, they go down because we no longer see ourselves in competition for limited resources, material resources, but we see ourselves as allies and awakening and coming in contact with and realizing the real value in life, which are spiritual values, spiritual experiences, which are not limited. There's plenty for everybody. And the more I have, the more I can give to others. And the more others have, the more good it is for me. So in this way, as a Hare Krishna devotee, I think I'm addressing both my needs, my inner needs as a youth to try to make the world a better place, and also my own deeper internal need for satisfaction. The focus of ISKCON communications, com communications in general, is to try to build mutually beneficial relationships between different people. We know that in our Krishna consciousness movement, we're trying to uplift the world, help the world by spreading spiritual knowledge. And we know that people in general, especially today with so much technology, they talk at each other. Sometimes you see people walking on the street and they're texting each other rather than talking with each other. So we tend to download information, but we don't tend to be very good at sharing information, sharing our feelings. Communication is about understanding first and foremost what are the needs the interest and the concerns of other people. Because if we understand that, then we can learn and understand how to find mutually cooperative areas that are of benefit to each of us. In other words, we all have a tendency to see the world from our own perspective. And we're oftentimes thinking in terms of other people and how they can serve our needs. But that naturally leads to conflict and very shallow relationships. But communications really means trying to understand how people can come together and work cooperatively. How we can understand how to apply things according to time, place, and circumstance. And how we can be proactive in our reaching out and building relationships with other people, with other organizations, to achieve mutually beneficial goals. And in the Hare Krishna movement, that means things like building relationships with other religious organizations that naturally are concerned about moral values. It means building relationships with religious organizations and religious leaders that are concerned about religious freedom. Or it means building relationships with academics who are trying to understand the history of, of, of religious studies throughout the world and how people can benefit from, from knowledge of those things. Or building relationships with government leaders who want to see that the people are healthy and happy in their particular jurisdiction and the Hare Krishna movement can contribute to that through sharing spiritual knowledge and also providing education and also providing food for people in need through our prashadam distribution programs, etc. So communications, learning about communications can be something that can benefit all people within our families, within our relationships with our friends, within our work environment, and certainly is a way to try to have an impact upon the spiritual direction of society at large, the moral direction of society at large, and really helping people understand that we do occupy this planet together. There are definite ways we can assist each other. And even if we have very different cultures, very different philosophical perspectives, very different backgrounds and environments, still through good communications, we can find areas of cooperation and we can help uplift each other and uplift the world. One of the things that I do in that role and also do just because of my own personal interest, is very involved in interfaith relations. Interfaith relations, or the relationships between people and different organizations of different religious traditions, I personally think is one of the most important initiatives and urgent needs of our time. In, in the past, 
centuries and millenniums, sometimes different religious communities didn't talk to each other. There were oceans between them or mountain ranges between them. But today the world is a much smaller place and every country in the world has got the great religious traditions all mixed up in terms of neighbors and working together and then schools together. So there's a really urgent need to understand each other and what motivates our deepest values as people of faith or people of spiritual practice. So I'm involved in a few different initiatives. I'm on the board of Religions for Peace USA. I'm involved with an organization called Religious Communicators Council, also in North America. I, I work with a committee with ANISCON that promotes interreligious dialogue and particularly working with uh, Muslim groups and, and Christian groups. We've been having Vaishnava Hindu, excuse me, Vaishnava Christian and Vaishnava Muslim dialogues in Washington, D.C., where I'm based with the Christian community for over 20 years and with the Muslim community for six years. And also in India, we've been having Vaishnava Christian dialogues for two years, going on our third. And these are opportunities and experiences that not only help us build mutually beneficial and priestly relationships, but they also help us deepen our own spiritual understanding. Because when we sit with a person of another tradition and ask them, what is it that motivates you? What do you find so inspiring about your particular scripture? What is it about your teachers that really you think can make a positive difference in the world? When we talk about those things with people of other traditions, one, it challenges us to go deeper in our own tradition and, and ask, well, why am I so inspired and so committed to my particular tradition? Is it just because it's comfortable, because I stumbled across it and it's what I've done for the last 10 years? Or is it something that my parents gave to me? Or is it something that just seems culturally compatible with what I do? Or do I really have deep experiences and commitment to that particular worldview? And similarly, by understanding different people's perspectives, it gives us a chance to actually see how the divinity or Lord Krishna or God, however we conceive the absolute, is working in many different ways and through many different traditions and many different people in really remarkable ways. You know, as a Hare Krishna devotee, I'm very aware of the teachings of our founder, Srila Prabhupada and Lord Krishna, who spoke our most sacred text, the Bhagavad Gita, and seeing how it impacts my life and impacts, impacts other Krishna devotees and people of our faith around the world. But also I can see when I interact with my Muslim friends how the teachings of the Quran are uplifting millions of people every single day. And when I interact with my Christian friends, I can see how they're so inspired by Lord Jesus Christ and they're so inspired by the Bible and they're so inspired to try to live a Christian way of life. And when I see that, that increases my faith how Krishna or God is working through everyone, everyone's life and everyone's heart throughout the world. And that inspires me in my own faith. So interfaith, I think, is an essential thing for peace in the world. It's an essential thing for self-development. It's an essential thing for us trying to learn how to actually fulfill the real potential in human life. So I encourage everyone, whether you're a lay person or a person of deep religious commitment, to spend some time to try to understand the great teachings of the many, many great religious traditions in the world and become enriched through those and share it with others. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna.